Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, I present to you part two of our three-part documentary style install of the GK Tech Z33 350Z and or Z34 370Z tip-to-tail hydraulic handbrake install. This time we will be covering the dual caliper bracket section of the install itself as Zack is back from getting himself lost in the mountains, so we shall give you the box shimmy you so deserve. Popping open the box and neatly arranging everything is probably not what you'll do, but we have, and this is what you get. Starting with the dual caliper spacers, which conveniently space your old calipers out to where the new ones will be sitting, which makes things all even steven. Next, you get a load of washers that do washer style things to the bolts that we will be providing. Speaking of said bolts, you get these long boys, which get fitted to the hubs. Next, you get some options depending on what calipers you're running. For the OEM non-Brembo boys, you will be using the longer and shorter finer thread bolts, with the longer ones being for the caliper, including the spacers, and the shorter ones for the calipers that are not using the spacers. Now, if you're swinging around those big Brembo calipers like you just don't care, you will be using the four coarse threaded bolts, placing them into the same spots I mentioned previously, just in a more baller way, of course. On a positive note, if you decide to get your swang on and upgrade later to the Brembos, you will have the hardware to do so. Last up are the actual dual caliper brackets themselves. These fine and dandy units are precision machined from 6061 T6 aluminum and does the job no one would have ever guessed it to, that being adding another caliper specifically for your yank stick. This here bracket happens to be 8mm thick, so keep that in mind when choosing your axle spacers. We also include a treasure map showing you what goes where, how much to tighten things, with free pictures included. Nice. Moving onwards and upwards to the prime visual and auditory performance you've all been waiting for, the install. As you can clearly see, we'll be using the Brembos for this install. So start by removing the caliper bolts from the back and hanging the caliper gingerly from wherever you choose. Pro tip, coat hangers, zip ties, or your shoelace are all things that could work, because you don't want to damage those brake lines, we promise. Release the handbrake so you too can be as smooth as us. Once that's off, remove the drum shoe retainer spring that helps keep the tension between the two shoes, top and bottom. Then twist and remove the retaining clips that hold those shoes in place. Now, smoothly and carefully remove both shoes and the adjuster as one. Now remove the e-brake pivot pin and lever by popping out the pin and utilizing a super expensive tool such as the one shown here. Swing round back of the nuck and loosen and remove the e-brake cable bracket bolt. Then slide the e-brake cable out of the way then move on to loosening and removing the e-brake bracket nuts themselves, then reaching around to the front and removing the e-brake bracket from the hub. Next, we want to remove the hub bolts, but the damn axle's all up in the way. So head towards the diff and loosen and remove all of the nuts and bolts that hold that sucker on, then let it dangle for dear life. Head out and grab some pinchy boys and get that split pin off and or out. Then grab a large as socket and loosen and remove the axle nut. Now get back under the car, grab the axle, throw down a quick Zeus tossing lightning pose for the gram, and lo and behold, you now have access to the hub bolts. So do the obvious and loosen all four of the bolts connecting the hub to the nuck. Then head back up front and remove the hub and dust shield from your whip and bring them over to your favorite flat surface for some much needed arts and crafts time. Go ahead and place the dust shield on the bench as shown. Lay the dual caliper bracket on the dust shield as shown. Then mark along the grooves, as shown. This will be a good indicator of where you will need to trim to make room for the new caliper. Here's where you can check and see to make sure that this is what you have marked on yours. Secure the dust shield in something that isn't your hands or thick as thighs, and clamp it down without encrushing the important bendy parts in the middle. Then get your favorite cutting tool out and get to lopping off the section you had marked earlier if you even are still paying attention. Then cut around the outer edge as shown here, knocking out the most awkward pizza shape you've ever seen. Then once done, pretty things up by cleaning the dust shield off. Now you can see here where the part we cut off perfectly lines up with where your new bracket places the calipers. This demo will now end. Heading back over to the car, we recommend slipping into the long boy hub bolts through to hold everything up whilst you get it fitted. Pop the dual caliper bracket on as shown here, then fit your fresh AF dust shield on like so, and install the hub to the dust shield. Then install the remaining hub bolts to the equation. And don't forget your washers, boys and girls. Once all four of those are tightened, 
Twerk down in a crisscross pattern to the setting shown right here on the screen. Now we have a separate video showcasing and explaining what axle spacers to use. So peep that on the quick, then get back to this vid ASAP. This is where how said spacer would be installed, so go ahead and do that. Rezeus pose that axle back into the hub, then pop up to the backside and install the axle to diff bolts, washers, and nuts. Tighten, then torque to the specs located south of the highly calibrated torque arm Zach possesses. Head back to the front and install the axle nut. Now, depending on what size spacer you used, you may need to cut the nut to accommodate the split pin, which can also be conveniently seen in our axle spacer video, shown here. Tighten down, then torque to the settings on the screen and toss in the split pin, then bend the bendies. Reinstall the e-brake bracket, then on the other side, it's two nuts. Tighten them on down and torque them to what's shown here. Now slip the e-brake cable through the hole and install the bolt holding down said bracket. Tighten that and then you guessed it, torque to these settings. Now reinstall the e-brake pivot pin and lever by lining it up and pushing the pin back in, then reinstalling the brake shoes into the same position as you took them off. Installing the retaining clips as shown here by pushing and twisting. Once both are in place, move on to installing the lower retaining spring. Now pop the adjuster back in between the shoes as shown. This should put the brakes right back where you left them, but if you need to learn how to adjust, peep our video on that as well, which we conveniently will flash on the screen for you. Now go ahead and install the last spring, then install the rotor to the hub. It's about high time I slapped you across the face with another pro tip, and 99% of the reasons why people have shitty e-brake action. Pretend you're sun tanning the front of yourself. Possibly nude, possibly not, doesn't matter. Your nipples would be towards the sun. That's how you want them to be on the car, facing the sun. Pointing them away from the sun results in a crappy tan and the air bubbles not being evaporated properly from the braking system. JK, you'll just never be able to bleed them if the nips are on the bottom and your e-brake won't do a damn thing. Enough about that, let's start with the install. Start by installing the e-brake caliper first on the rear side of the nut with the nips facing skywards, utilizing the shorter coarse threaded bolts and washers we have provided. Wind those into the caliper, then tighten, then torque down to the specs shown here. Now move on to installing the foot brake caliper by sliding it on tenderly. Grab those spacers we mentioned three hours ago at the start of this video, then grab the longer coarse threaded bolts and some washers and thread those into the calipers, then tighten and torque to these specs shown as well. And my god, you now have two calipers, one wheel. Some people may puke, but those in the know, no. Your yank stick is now one step closer to being more than just a pretty decoration up front. If you stumbled upon this vid first somehow, go peep the previous one where we install the hydro bracket and lever. Then rewatch this one again so we get the extra view and that .00003 cents. Anyway, this is us. We are GK Tech, GK Tech is us. We aren't some randos in a faraway country. Oh, wait, yes, we can kind of... Or that doesn't matter. We love cars, we love drifting, and we're passionate about everything we do, hence the care and precision we take to craft these videos. We do it for you guys. Go peep our channels for more. If you can't install these, have a pro do it, or reach out to us with any questions you may or may not have. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and Zeus Mode Zach with another GK Tech How-To. Peace.